G'day everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Dividend Machine. Thanks for tuning in. In this episode, we'll take a look at the fallout that came out of the Tesla Battery Day announcements and we'll also have a look at the stock Brain Chip, which is listed on the ASX. Last episode, I talked a lot about the company Novonix or Novonix, and in this episode, we'll see how they were affected by those Tesla Battery Day announcements. And then at the end of the video, we'll take a look at my portfolio, have a look at the stocks I'm watching closely and see how my portfolio has been performing. The channel is about to hit 200 subscribers, so thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with the latest news. Now, as always guys, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any investment decisions, make sure you see a qualified financial advisor. Okay, let's get straight into it. What happened on battery day? Well, we saw some pretty exciting announcements made by Tesla, including a new battery technology that they were looking at manufacturing in-house. However, there was no mention of Novonix whatsoever throughout the entire press conference. On Wednesday morning, I woke up to have a look at the highlights package coming out of the battery day conference. I didn't see any information on Novonix whatsoever, but I did note that Tesla had this new battery technology that they were pursuing. I thought maybe the two were related, but after a little bit of digging, I found someone who posted a very informal Facebook post. This post highlighted that the battery technology Tesla said that they were going to use going forward is not the same as the one that Novonix holds the intellectual property for. I double checked and this turned out to be true. So at the opening of the stock market, I was expecting Novonix shares to go south very fast. What happened next really surprised me. At the start of trading, we saw the Novonix price go up 10%. 20% and I think it peaked at around a 29% gain on the previously listed price. This just didn't make sense to me, especially after making the connection that the Novonix technology would not be used by Tesla going forward. Now, I don't know why the share price jumped so much. I can only assume it was people who misunderstood the Tesla announcement or those who were just jumping on the bandwagon as they saw the Novonix price go up early in the morning. For those who got out at the top at a 29% gain, great job, well done, you played it very well. But over the next few hours, we saw the share price go from a 29% gain all the way down to a 10% loss, which is a massive 40% swing. And then by Friday, by the end of the week, Novonix was trading down 46% on their pre battery day announcement price. This is a massive loss and shows that there was a lot of speculation and hype driving up the Novonix price prior to the Tesla announcement. So for those who bought into Novonix on the Wednesday morning and entered in above $2, you were looking at some really serious losses. I think this just highlights the fact that it's so important to know what you're investing in and to have some understanding of the technology behind it. Without this knowledge, you won't be able to properly understand new announcements and make investing decisions based on this new information. Like I said in the previous video, I was waiting on a positive announcement before entering into a position in Novonix. We didn't get that and now the stock is just not looking as good as it used to. It is possible in the future Novonix might strike a deal with another battery producing company, maybe Panasonic or someone similar. But until that point in time, I think for me personally, the stock has lost its allure. I'm really not interested in Novonix at this point. I wish the company all the best and hopefully they do succeed in the future. It's a good thing for the Australian stock market, but for now I just can't see any upside for Novonix. So the next stock I wanted to talk about is called Brainchip. I think the Brainchip story ties in really nicely with Novonix because recently we also saw a massive rise in the Brainchip price followed by a pretty rapid crash. I think similar to Novonix, it is a pretty speculative stock. Yes, they've got some technology in the works, but there's no major commercial deals which have been put into place to prove that this company will be profitable going forward. Brainchip is, however, very popular with investors. It comes up all the time on my broker's website, Self Wealth, as being one of the most viewed stocks of the day. I thought for this reason, it's worth having a closer look at the company and see what sort of potential value they might bring to the table. Now, it's not immediately apparent what Brainchip does as a business, so I decided to do some digging and find out what it actually is that they're bringing to the market. I found their YouTube channel a pretty good way 
to find this information and determine exactly what the company does. So essentially they develop ultra low power chips that can process information and it's especially designed for artificial intelligence. The chips operate like a neural network, kind of like how our brain works, which is different to your typical microprocessors. This allows them to be very small and also consume a very small amount of power. The main intention is to use these chips in devices that are part of the internet of things. It will enable them to efficiently record data without consuming a lot of energy. They have a demonstration video of how the chip uses artificial intelligence to learn how to recognize different objects. I'll put a link to that below in the description if you're interested in checking that out. However, I would note that brain chips marketing and Facebook page and the like are not super professional and it's definitely not what I'd expect out of a pioneering technology company. This is also noted in the comments on their YouTube video. There's some disappointed investors down there talking about how they'd expect a bit more out of the company. For me, this is probably the first red flag for the company. So who else is trying to develop a similar technology to Brainchip? Now Brainchip openly disclosed their competitors. They are Nvidia, Intel, and IBM. They're all big American giants of computing technology. Whilst it may be possible that Brainchip does have a technological breakthrough, I think these other companies stand quite a good chance as well, given their huge R&D budgets. From what I've read about the company, it seems their technology is not being commercialized at the moment. They don't have any major industry partners, which they're selling their product to, and they're not profitable on paper either. So here are my three key takeaways for Brainchip. One, their marketing and media presentation is pretty elementary. It's not very good. It definitely won't be luring in a lot of investors. Two, they don't have any major commercial partnerships which appear to be profitable for the company. And three, their balance sheet isn't in great shape. It's certainly not as strong as some other up and coming growth companies. For those three reasons, personally, Brainship doesn't make my growth stock watch list. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I'd like to know if you know anything about the company that maybe I haven't touched on, let me know in the comments below. Personally, I like to focus more on companies that can prove profitability and increasing profitability year on year. An example of this in the same space as Brainship would be Altium. Altium manufacture custom circuit boards and they sell these globally. Altium has been a great growth stock for investors, so I'd encourage you to check them out if you are interested in that brain chip space. Another big player in the artificial intelligence space on the ASX is Appen Limited. Appen provides training data to big companies which are trying to develop artificial intelligence. High quality training data is used for simulations so that companies can refine their AI. Some of Appen's major customers include Microsoft, Amazon, and IBM. These are some of the same companies that Brainchip is actually trying to compete against. So it's interesting, if you're interested in artificial intelligence, you may not need to invest in a company that's trying to develop the intelligence itself in order to profit off the technology. Appen is a great example of this because they are providing a resource to the artificial intelligence market in order to help them develop their products. I'd also take a close look at Appen if you are interested in the artificial intelligence space. Perhaps Appen could be a good alternative investment to a company like Brainship. This is especially considering their very strong balance sheet and their proven profitability over a number of years now. Okay, moving on now, let's take a look at how my portfolio has been tracking. As you can see, there's been a shift in some of the most profitable stocks in the portfolio, along with those that are at the bottom of the bunch. Mully Spoon's still struggling, unfortunately. It wasn't too long ago that this was my best performing stock. They are a bit of a speculative play, so this is expected, and I think on their next earnings report, we will see the share price of this company recover somewhat. On another note, one of my recent purchases, Pushpay, has done what I thought it would do and has produced quite a nice return. It's tracking at about a 10% improvement on the purchase price. I expect this attractive return to continue into the future as this company expands. We've also seen one of my dividend stocks, Transurban, improve its position and move its way into the top five stocks in my portfolio. Overall, the total return to date is around 2.4%, still very low. It is building and hopefully we can get it over 10% in the next few months. In terms of purchases this week, I haven't made any. None of the stocks that I've been looking at have presented a buying opportunity. I have, however, been watching A2 Milk very closely. 
it looks like the price may have turned and there's some positive momentum getting in behind this stock at the moment. However, my concerns around China still remain, so I'll be very cautious when investing in this company. PointsBet's share price has continued to slide since their recent capital raising. If this price continues to move down, I think this could be worth picking up in the near future. If you want to look at all the reasons why I think PointsBet is a good investment, check out my video on PointsBet. I'll put a link up on the screen now. Now, I mentioned the company Appen Limited earlier in the video. I really like this company, and if you want to see a fundamental analysis of them, let me know, and I'll do a video dedicated to the company. They're definitely a company that's on my watch list and they're rated as undervalued by quite a few analysts. So I think potentially an investment in Appen could have some really good long-term results. Anyway, that's all from me for this week. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you've got any questions about any of the topics covered, make sure to leave them down below. I really enjoy having a conversation with you guys in the comments section. Anyway, until next time, stay safe and cheers.